So now that we've gone over an overview of the domino and its various parts and even a couple of the usage notes uh, just in, in passing, I'd like to actually go and do a couple of demos. It's very similar to some of the demos that you've seen, but I'm going to talk you through some of the parts and some of the variations that you can do on it and how you can get your job done even faster than some of the videos show. Of course, the video, the guy does three plunges and he's got a cabinet done. Now the domino reassembles very easily. There's the one column that's longer, you put that into the column hole, and then after that it makes it very easy for the other one to line up and then you just drop it down until it goes and clicks. There is actually a little clicker in here that you can see. That's going to grab onto the fence. You don't have to worry about that. Just go till you hear the click and you'll be okay. Now, <clears throat> For this demonstration, I'm just, I have the 5mm domino bits, that's going to be these little tiny ones that are over here. We're just going to go ahead and use some of those in some of this stuff here. Now, one of the keys I'd like to point out about the domino that makes it a little different than a biscuit joiner is, yes, a lot of the reference surface use and a lot of the alignment is similar to a biscuit joiner, but biscuits are considerably larger. And they honestly don't have that much strength to them because of the way that they're put in. They're used a lot for alignment, and of course you can use them on some smaller cabinets. But here, you'd be very hard pressed to get this piece here attached at a 90 degree angle simply because this isn't even wide enough for the biscuit to go into. Where this shines is that I can use a 5 millimeter domino and I've got plenty of room. And if for some reason this was even more narrow, I could go and switch to the 4, although the 4 is, is pretty, pretty small. <laughs> it's useful mostly for a jewelry box. But that's a great advantage to the domino system versus the others. Plus also, these are steamed beach. These things are actually tenaciously hard. I'm going to put a little piece of tape on this rod right here. I want you to see what the oscillating motion looks like. So, just give that a look when I run this. So let's measure this stock so we know its thickness. Now this is 23 millimeters thick. So what we could do is we could use one of the two scales I described before. Now there's this 22 millimeter thick, but let's see what other numbers we've got going there. There's 22 and then there's 25. Well, I, I needed 23, so what am I going to do? 22 is good enough. The point is, is it's going to put it at a certain distance from the top reference surface. So you want to make sure you keep your reference surfaces aligned. So we'll go ahead and set that to 22. Now this is a, a pointer that I don't know if it's just my domino or perhaps all of them. What I do is I make sure that this fence is up and locked. Then I set my height. So I'm going to drop this down to it, whoops, down to 22. And then I'm going to lock it in place. And now I'm going to tip this down to 90 degrees. The reason why I specify that is for the longest time I wondered why every now and then, and I'll exaggerate this, but every now and then I'd get a, the pieces would align a little bit like that. I mean, not this much, but just a little bit. And I could never figure out why. And what it is is if this fence was already down when I set the height, the other side would never always be square. But if it's in the upright position, it works great. So just keep that in mind if you're ever having a problem with it. So what we're going to want to do is that we have this rail here, or style, whichever way we're going to do it, and we're going to do a 90 degree angle right there. Okay, and we want that to be flush on the edge or as best as possible. So one of the ways you can do it, you can do it the very simple way with the pencil line, is we can make a measurement of this, see how wide it is, and we're going to find that it's... Uh, Now there we go. Now we can do that little. Now we can do that and line it up. Of course, you can measure it like this, or if you want to, you can always just you know put those there and eyeball it. All you care about it. I can draw this line arbitrarily, just as long as it goes across. That's all I care. It doesn't even have to be all that straight because I just care about the very, very edge just before this edge and the very end here on that edge here. So that makes it a little bit faster if you are going to do anything with pencil lines. Is just mark it by eye and care only about that very, very tip. That's what you're going to line up the crosshairs with. Now the way I'm going to line this up, so that you can see, is you can see where my pencil line is sliding side to side, and then I'm going to line that up right onto the crosshairs. And you can see through the hole that's in that plastic uh, measuring that you can tell exactly where you're at. So if this ever gets really dirty, you're going to be able to still see that. So let's go ahead and do that plunge, and uh, you won't be able to hear a thing while I do this. <laughs> And there's our hole. Now, okay, you saw the way that I was hanging on to that. I'm comfortable with the way that I do it because I press with my two fingers on the outside. So if for some reason the bit were to come through, which I verify and double check a hundred times, I'd be okay. But that's my comfort level with this tool after using it for, uh, well, basically since it got introduced. So 
you know, clamp this down, use another piece of the same thickness stock as a backer. You can do it that way as well, but just, you know, do only do what you're comfortable with. So now we're gonna do the one that goes into the end. Again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna scoot it side to side till we line up the hole, and then we're gonna go ahead and do the plunge. Now there is one thing to notice that I'm doing here that's important to do. My MFT top is up higher than this rail, okay? And I have my domino mostly over top of this open area. The reason being is that I want this thing to register dead flat and it happens so many times at first when you first get this tool that you're doing a plunge and you actually have it on the MFT. Yet the distance, the thickness here is very close to your stock thickness, right? I mean, assume that it was uh, then this thing here would be sitting on the bench but not quite flat on the top here and you're gonna put a plunge in the wrong place yeah I know that sounds absolutely impossible because what moron would do that but uh, I'm, I know one so now we can slide the domino into the end of this and then we can push it into the other end on this one here and there you go nice clean joint and I mean that is pretty close to dead nuts on so that's how you can do it when you're bothering to measure I am going to go ahead and do this other side. I'm just going to do it by making an arbitrary line. And I'm going to in intentionally make it very crooked. So let me get this thing nice and flush. All right, now I've done this one very diagonally. All I care about is where it intersects this edge and where it intersects this edge here. And we'll go and we'll do the same thing over again. to hang on to on this one. So we'll put that in there. There we go. Same success. So next I'd like to show you how you would do a plunge if you're going to be putting this this piece into the end of this board. So say sticking out like that for whatever reason that you have it. And this is also going to bring up another concern that you would have about how you do your assembly. So again we would put the mortise into the end of this and that will be pretty easy to figure out. But we're also going to need to put plunge down, straight down into the top of this board. Now, again, we can put that little attachment that I talked about in the past onto the end here. It's going to make it easier to stand up. And I can show you how this would look otherwise. Otherwise, you're going to be like this, and you can see there's just so much play there. You're going to have a hard time making sure that that's dead vertical. So we'll go ahead and put this on. So once that's attached, you're going to find that there's a whole lot more stability. So that's how we're going to do the plunge on this. Now the depth of this, you still set the depth to the depth that you're going to want off of your reference surface here on the smaller member, because here you're going to go out into the field. So since we're going to be putting this here, this is 22 millimeters, we have this, or 23 millimeters, but we have it set to 22. We're going to go 11 millimeters down from this reference surface, which also happens to be this reference surface. So let's go ahead and do that plunge. What I want to show you is I'm going to do an offset domino. This one here, I'm going to plunge further into this narrow piece and less into this board. I don't want it going so far that it's going to possibly poke through. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do 12 on the one side, okay, and then 20 on the other. Okay, that's more than we need. We need 30 for this domino. That just means there's going to be a little bit more of a kind of a glue recess at the end. It's not going to make it any weaker or anything like that. So that's fine to do an offset like that. So we're going to do 12 into the face of this board. And now I'll set it to 20 for the end of this. Now I didn't even bother putting a center line on here. I'm just going to eyeball it.
this was my reference surface for the fence, so that's going to be the one that's going to be flat to the outside. Pop this domino in, and pop this domino in there, and it's good to go. I mentioned that there's something to take into account in a joint like this, and this is what I'd like to point out. This is going to be long grain to long grain glue joint on the inside. This domino is never going to want to get out of the socket. However, here, the grain is running this way on this panel. So there's end grain on the inside there. There's only a little tiny bit of long grain on the outside edges, and that's only going to grab onto this little minuscule edge. So in, a, in effect, you have just a large end grain to, to long grain glue joint on the inside, which you also have on the edge. Just as much as you wouldn't take this board and just glue it onto the surface like this, you really don't want to have a glue joint like that without doing some sort of a reinforcement. Now, one reinforcement that you could do, but well, actually this is a good demonstration. Take a look at that edge that I just showed there. It's because this was my reference edge. I put it down incorrectly. Now it's back to being flush. So when you're doing a glue joint like that, sure, you can glue the whole thing up, but you'd really want to add a mechanical fastener. And I find that the best mechanical fastener for something like this is just put a little pin through it. Uh, it's still not ideal but it does allow you to do a joint like this with a little bit of strength. And I'm going to show you how strong the pins are and how you can do additional assembly with that. Now on this sample board that I put together yesterday, what I did is, you know, speaking of the pins, I took this piece of scrap and I dominoed it into this other piece of scrap. This one here was done with glue only, so there's a domino in there and it's just all glued in. This one here though, I glued and then I pinned it. I pinned it from behind so you wouldn't be able to see the pins. So yeah, as long as the pins don't go all the way through, you're, you're golden on this. This one here, I intend to do this joint for you right now, and I'll show you how you put it together, and then I'm just going to pin it in place, and then we'll see how strong each one of these are. We're going to try uh, breaking them apart. doing this for a real project what you'd end up doing is you put some glue inside the mortise holes on both sides and you'd put some glue on your domino you'd ram that thing in ram it in onto the other end so even though there, these are different thicknesses because I use this as the reference surface the ledge is on the back I mean, whether or not you want to do that never know you might have some use for it so what we'd normally do then at that point is clamp it together somehow so we'll go ahead and do that here Again, I don't have any glue on it. This is just dry. So now that it's nicely attached, if I wanted to lock this into place right now, I'm just going to show you how to do it with a, with a pin. So put it right through the domino there and right through the domino on this side. I didn't do it on the back because you already know I put it there. So now we can take this apart. You can see that that's actually really strong. Yeah, I can get some, I can muscle it a little bit there to, to get it to rack. But otherwise, if I had, one of the nice things about it is I could put glue there and then pin it into place and then I could take the clamp off and then put it off on the side and let it dry. So and that's exactly what I did on this one here. I put the glue there, put the clamp on it, pinned it, let it sit there a little bit longer until I needed the, the clamp and then took it out and it's rock solid. But the thing is, is that pin is also going to add a little bit more strength. I mean, even though this has zero glue, I can't really pull that out. Of course, you're looking at me going, well, yeah, but you're not strong enough to pull it out anyway. 